What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, a.k.a. NY Prepper. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1451 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from the Middle East and from Europe. So starting with the Middle East, several intelligence sources are confirming significant activity at Iranian long-range missile facilities in the western and northern part of Iran. Okay, so Iran has put their long-range missile sites on high alert, and there's apparently significant activity at these sites in the western and northern part of Iran. So it's possible that Iran could launch missiles at Israel. Retaliation against Israel for bombing an embassy in Damascus is pending. Yesterday, Israel violated the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. They apparently bombed the ambassador's official residence situated on the embassy compound, which is Iranian sovereign territory. Iran's parliament vice speaker, Mujdaba Zanuri cautioned Israel to anticipate retaliation within its borders, stressing that diplomatic missions are considered part of sovereign territory. Iran's supreme leader said today that Israel will receive a slap in the face for the attack in Damascus. This was reported by Tasnim News Agency. So we have the supreme leader of Iran threatening Israel. We have Iran's Parliament Vice Speaker cautioning Israel to anticipate retaliation within its borders. And according to a source within the U.S. Embassy in Israel, a message was received at the White House from the Iranian Foreign Minister Abdullahine. And in the message, Iran warned the U.S. against any interference in Iran's response to the Israeli bombing of the Iranian consulate in Syria. Okay, so Iran warning the U.S. not to interfere. And the CIA confirmed that Iran will attack Israel in the next 48 hours. This is being reported by Israeli Channel 14. And the scenarios for a retaliatory strike by Iran involve a combined attack by a swarm of drones and cruise missiles that will be launched directly from Iran at strategic locations in Israel. Okay, so that's what the CIA is saying. So potentially by tomorrow, Iran could launch this retaliatory strike on Israel inside of Israeli borders, and it could involve a swarm of drones and cruise missiles. Okay, this is very, very serious, guys. And the death toll of the strike on the Iranian consulate has risen to 13. And this includes seven military officers. And the Israeli Defense Forces have called up reservists to boost air defense units ahead of the potential attack. And I want to just update you guys on the earthquake situation in Taiwan. So we're hearing of dozens of people killed and injured now, as many as 37 aftershocks being reported. So what you're looking at here are all of the aftershocks, and they're still ongoing. Every 15 minutes or so, there's an aftershock. You can see all of these aftershocks. Right now, they're down in the 4.0 to 5.0 range, so they're slowly getting weaker and weaker. But the initial earthquake was a 7.7, okay? Absolutely insane. Here we have some footage coming out of Taiwan during that 7.7. .7. You can see this entire overpass shaking. Look at this, guys. This is absolutely insane. Absolutely crazy. Look, the entire bridge here, overpass, is just shaking the concrete is just swaying left to right. I mean, that is just crazy. And then here we have a video showing Taiwanese firefighters trying to extract people 
from this partially collapsed building kind of looks like the leaning tower of pisa and they're uh using a ladder truck to access a balcony and get people out of the building because they're afraid to uh walk out because this building is literally on the verge of collapsing so crazy situation in taiwan keep the people of taiwan in your prayers and we have some more NATO forces being moved eastward. Here we have a picture of some German army Bradleys, it appears like, at a railway station in Utsedl, which is on the border of Poland. Okay. And the other day I shared a video that the Polish military released showing Poland moving their M1 Abrams to Warsaw. So this is very concerning, guys. NATO is preparing for a war with Russia potentially and potentially a Belarusian attack on Lithuania, which is what I think is going to happen. And NATO does not have enough forces to repel that kind of attack on the Baltic countries. They don't have enough forces there. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three month emergency food supply has a 25 year shelf life, it includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets, and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video, okay? Here we have the video that was posted by the Polish military showing them moving dozens and dozens of M1 Abrams towards Warsaw. So Poland is on high alert right now. We're also hearing that the U.S. military has started recalling veteran retirees and is ordering them to report for active duty, citing Executive Order 13223 from the Bush administration in 2001. This order allows for the recall of retired soldiers to active duty from the retired reserves or the retired list under 10 U.S.C. 688. 12301A or 12301D. The recall is part of an effort to address the military's manpower shortages and to fill critical vacancies. The recall process aligns with Army Regulation 601-10, which requires that recalled retiree soldiers be assigned to valid vacant positions that match their grade and skill. So this is crazy, guys. We are literally now recalling retired veterans into the military we wouldn't be doing that for no reason okay if we weren't concerned about escalation we wouldn't be recalling all these retired soldiers okay and here we have a picture that was posted by joint base charleston and it shows thousands of humvees and medical trucks and utility trucks and various types of military equipment sitting at the port in Charleston. And they wrote here, over the course of several days, almost 1,500 pieces of equipment were loaded onto the USNS Charleston. The ship will be strategically positioned at sea for rapid deployment of a brigade combat team 
ensuring a quick response in the event of any possible contingency. So they loaded 1,500 pieces of equipment onto this ship that you see here, this gray ship, and they're going to leave it in the ocean. And if something happens, they're going to move it to a specific region of the world and unload all this equipment. Now, a lot of people were saying that, oh, this is all sand-colored equipment and it's not destined for Europe. But if you actually look closely, there's a bunch of trucks and equipment here that are also painted in woodland camouflage, okay? And they can actually repaint these pretty quickly anyway. So that's not really a concern. But what's very concerning is all these medical trucks here. Okay, there's just probably 100 medical trucks uh, on this ship. Okay, that this is for war, guys. This is for war. It's not for training. It's not for deterrence. This is for war. When you have a hundred medical trucks here, that is for war. Okay, so get prepared, guys. We have escalation imminent. And at this hour, we currently have a U.S. nuclear war command and control plane in the air over Iowa. And we also have a nuke sniffer plane over nebraska and we had two rc-135 cobra balls in the air over the bering sea this morning and overnight last night because russia is going to be conducting two ballistic missile tests this week they're going to be testing their sarmat and then they're going to be testing their topol m now what's very concerning about these tests is that these missiles are Russia's city killer missiles, okay? These are the missiles that Russia would use for a counter value strike on the U.S. to destroy our cities and cripple our society, okay? The Topol M, they have about 80 of them in silos and on trucks, and each one of the Topol M missiles has a one megaton warhead, and so... You don't use a one megaton warhead to destroy a missile silo or a military base. A one megaton warhead is a huge warhead. And the only thing you can use that for is for destroying a large area, like a big city, like New York City or Chicago or L.A. Okay, they would airburst one of those warheads about a mile over the city and completely level the city. Okay, and they have almost 80 of those missiles on trucks and in silos just enough to hit all of our cities and to also get through our missile defense system and then they also have the sarmat missile that they're testing which is also like a city killer missile because it's an ultra heavy icbm and it's actually liquid fueled so the fact that the sarmat is liquid fueled and ultra heavy means that it's a first strike weapon that they would use in a surprise attack on the u.s Okay, because you have to fuel it up. It's not useful for a counterattack because we would just destroy them in the counterattack because our missiles can reach Russia in 15 to 30 minutes and it takes up to two hours to fuel one of those missiles. So they're not for a counterattack, they're for a first strike. Okay, and they're testing the city killers and the first strike missiles this week. Okay, I don't know how much clearer it can get that Russia is preparing for a full-blown war with the West, okay? They're in a wartime economy right now. 30% of their budget is going towards their military. They're pumping out millions of artillery shells. And what are we doing? We're doing nothing at all, okay? We're doing absolutely zero to prepare for this war, okay? We are not prepared. Our society is not prepared. People don't know what to do in a nuclear war. We don't have shelters. Okay, we don't have enough artillery shells even to send to Ukraine anymore. Meanwhile, Russia has millions. Okay, so get prepared, guys. Things are really spiraling out of control. And it appears that the Ukrainians hit another Russian facility behind enemy lines. This is coming out of Rostov. Rostov is a city in Russia close to the Black Sea. And it looks like they hit some kind of fuel depot or some kind of hangar here. So Ukraine is continuing to strike Russia deep behind the lines. The other day, 
they sent a drone 1300 kilometers deep into Russia and they took out an oil refinery again. Okay. And why is Ukraine doing this? Because they don't have the weapons they need to win on the front lines because the West has not provided the proper weapons and in proper quantities for them to win on the front lines. So they're doing whatever they can to hurt Russia. And so they're going after their oil facilities because Russia's economy is dependent on oil and gas. Okay. So the situation in Ukraine is not looking good. And apparently France is preparing a military contingent of 1,500 soldiers to be sent into Ukraine. This was reported by Maria Zakharova, the Russian foreign ministry spokeswoman. And obviously you got to take that with a grain of salt. But Maria Zakharova saying France is going to be deploying 1,500 soldiers to Ukraine. And two Russian nuclear bombers flew over the Barents Sea and the Norwegian Sea last night. The flight of the bombers was monitored at various stages by fighter jets from other countries, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. The flight lasted five hours. The bombers were escorted by Sukhoi 35s. So Russia is sending bombers into the Norwegian Sea, and we've been sending our bombers up to the Kola Peninsula. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's escalating, guys. We're sending our bombers to their borders. They're sending their bombers to our borders. They're testing their uh, missiles, their city killers. So it's a serious situation. The head of the Russian National Security Council, Nikolai Petrushev, said the Ukrainian embassy in Tajikistan is recruiting fighters to attack Russia. He said they are trying to convince us that the act of terror in Crocus City Hall was not committed by the Kiev regime, but by supporters of radical Islamic ideology, probably members of the Afghan branch of ISIS. However, it is more important to quickly determine who was the client and sponsor of this criminal crime. The traces lead to the Ukrainian secret services, he added, speaking at the Forum of Secretaries of the Security Council of States of the Shanghai Military Organization, so Nikolai Petrushev is blaming Ukraine yet again, saying that Ukraine is recruiting fighters in Tajikistan to attack Russia. French President Emmanuel Macron held confidential talks with Joe Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in February to persuade them to change the West strategy in Russia's war against Ukraine. The Wall Street Journal is reporting Macron believes that Western countries should adopt a position of strategic ambiguity regarding the Russian Federation, which would leave all options on the table, including military ones. Biden has questioned the need for a change in strategy amid fears it could lead to escalation. And Olaf Scholz also opposed the idea. Macron told the U.S. and NATO that their involvement would not be needed if French troops in Ukraine were attacked. This is what the French president said in response to Washington's objection that the possible deployment of French troops to Ukraine and a Russian strike on them could draw Western countries into conflict with Russia. France has repeatedly suffered losses in military campaigns, for example, in Africa without seeking help from allies, the French president added. So, you know, Emmanuel Macron trying to look like the hero here, but where was he two years ago when the troops were really, truly needed? OK, that was the time to send troops in, not now when the Ukrainian front lines are on the verge of collapsing. OK, now it's too late. Now it's pointless. They should have sent those troops in two years ago when Russian forces were on the run in Kupiansk and Kherson. That was the time to send the F-16s and the Storm Shadows and uh, the Leopard tanks. That was the time to do all of this, not one or two years after OK, when Russia has had time to fortify the front lines, reconstitute, mobilize, turn up millions of artillery shells. Now it's too late and the F-16s are not going to do anything. OK, it's just another BS fantasy, just like the Leopard tanks. You don't win a war with one piece of equipment. They all have to work together and you need logistics. You need a uh, surplus of these weapons. You need surplus of ammunition. Okay, what's Ukraine going to do 
when they run out of the missiles for the F-16s? Is the West prepared to give Ukraine thousands of missiles for the F-16s? Because within the first day or two of them launching a bombing campaign on the Russian front lines, they're going to run out of bombs and missiles. And it's going to be the same thing like with the Atakums or with the HIMARS. They're going to make some progress and then they're going to run out of missiles. And then they're going to wait five months for NATO to send them more. And then by then, Russia is going to reconstitute, fortify and replenish. And then it's back to square one. And that's the problem now. Okay, the problem is Russia has had the last two years to reconstitute. The West has been making fun of Russian soldiers saying that they don't have boots, that they're fighting with old weapons, that they're not trained, they're trained for two weeks. How do we know that that's even true? That could be disinformation to make us think that they're weaker than they really are. That could be a Russian disinformation campaign to make us think, oh yeah, that they're so weak. Their soldiers don't have food. They don't have shoes. They don't have equipment, but somehow they're winning. Somehow they're able to hold this entire front line. And they spent millions and millions of dollars building this huge defense line, okay, with uh, all kinds of fortifications. So it's a very dire situation in Ukraine, unfortunately. And, and the reason why is the West has been dilly dallying the last two years because we don't want to get uncomfortable. We want Ukraine to bleed for us, and we think we're just going to sit here and give them weapons, and they're going to bleed on the battlefield while we sit on the couch and watch TV, okay? And that's the reason why Ukraine is in the situation it's in, and I think it's irreversible because Russia has had so much time to reconstitute, and it doesn't matter if their equipment is, is not top-notch or their training is not the best. It doesn't matter, okay? They have numbers they have a lot of artillery they have a lot of men and that's all they need okay they don't need to have the best equipment to win this war they're not fighting against america they're fighting against ukraine okay and according to high-ranking ukrainian officers the military picture in ukraine is grim and russian generals could find success wherever they decide to focus their upcoming offensive the officers said there's a great risk of the front lines collapsing wherever Russian generals decide to focus their offensive. Moreover, thanks to a much greater weight in numbers and the guided aerial bombs that have been smashing Ukrainian positions for weeks now, Russia will likely be able to penetrate the front line and crash it in in some parts, they said. They spoke on the condition of anonymity to speak freely. There's nothing that can help Ukraine now because there are no serious technologies able to compensate Ukraine for the large mass of troops Russia is likely to hurl at us. We don't have those technologies and the West doesn't have them as well in sufficient numbers, one of the top-ranking military sources told Politico. However, the high-ranking Ukrainian officers reminded that relying on Russian errors is not a strategy and they were bitter about the missteps they say hamstrung Ukraine's resistance from the start, missteps made by both the West and Ukraine. They were also scathing about Western foot dragging, saying supplies and weapon systems came too late and in insufficient numbers to make the difference they otherwise could have. Solzhny used to call it the war of one chance, one of the officers said. By that, he meant weapon systems became redundant very quickly because they're quickly countered by the Russians. For example, we used Storm Shadow and Scalp missiles successfully, but just for a short time. The Russians are always studying. They don't give us a second chance. They're successful in this. Don't believe the hype about them just throwing troops into the meat grinder to be slaughtered, he added. They do that too, of course maximizing even more the impact of their superior numbers, but they also learn and refine. The officers said the shoulder-fired anti-tank missiles supplied by the UK and the US in the first weeks of the invasion came in time, helping them save Kyiv, and so too did the HIMARS, the light multiple launch rocket systems, which were used to great effect, enabling them to push Russia out of Kherson in November 2022. But often we just don't get the weapon systems at the time we need them. They come when they're no longer relevant, 
Another senior officer said, citing the F-16 fighter jets as an example, a dozen or so F-16s are expected to be operational this summer after basic pilot training has been completed. Every weapon has its own right time. F-16s were needed in 2023. They won't be right for 2024, he said. And that's because, according to this officer, Russia is ready to counter them. In the last few months, we started to notice missiles being fired by the Russians from Jankoy in northern Crimea, but without the explosive warheads. We couldn't understand what they were doing, and then we figured it out. Their range finding, he said. The officer explained that Russia's been calculating where best to deploy their S-400 missile systems and radars in order to maximize the area they can cover to target the F-16s keeping them away from the front lines and Russia's logistical hubs. The officers also said they now need more basic traditional weapons as well as drones. We need howitzers and shells, hundreds of thousands of shells and rockets, one of them told Politico, estimating that Ukraine needed 4 million shells and 2 million drones. We told the Western partners all the time that we have the combat experience, we have the battlefield understanding of this war, they have the resources and they need to give us what we need, he added. The officers emphasized that they need many, many, many more men too. The country currently doesn't have enough men on the front lines and this is compounding the problem of underwhelming Western support. Okay, so I was warning you guys about this for weeks already. I'm telling you the Ukrainian front line is on the verge of collapse. Okay, and when that happens... Russia is going to push towards the capital and they're going to try to cut Ukraine off from the Black Sea. And that's when we could see NATO try to get involved and we could see an escalation. And also we got to monitor the situation with Lithuania and the Baltic countries because Belarus is moving troops to the border over there. And the Russian Ministry of Defense claims that the number of Russians willing to participate in the war is growing. Since the beginning of the year, over 100,000 people have signed contracts with the armed forces of the Russian Federation. The ministry's statement shows that the number of people willing to participate in a special military operation is growing. Every day, up to 1,700 people report to recruitment points in the country to start military service, the Russian Ministry of Defense said. And Zelensky said today that by June the 1st, Russia wants to mobilize 300,000 men. Vladimir Zelensky spoke about this during a joint press conference with the president of Finland, Alexander Stubb. At the same time, Zelensky said that Ukraine does not need to mobilize 500,000 soldiers, as previously suggested, and will seek forces within the armed forces of Ukraine so that those who have not been on the front so far will go to the front. So that's a smart move by Zelensky. Rather than sending more young people and having to train them from scratch, he's going to try to find people who have not been at the front in the Ukrainian military and send them to the front. The Ukrainian military intelligence directorate thinks it can destroy the Crimean Bridge soon. We will do it in the first half of 2024, one official told the UK Guardian, adding that Kirillo Budinov, the leader of the Ukrainian military intelligence, already had most of the means to carry out this goal. Wow. So potentially soon we could see a destruction of the Crimean Bridge. And a new law in the Romanian parliament will allow the Romanian military to come to the aid of Romanian citizens abroad which find themselves in danger. And what's interesting is in Moldova, 53% of Moldovans have Romanian citizenship. So this is basically a law that will allow Romania to go to Moldova with their military if Russia attacks Moldova. I want to remind you guys that Moldova used to be part of Ukraine. I want to remind you guys that Moldova used to be part of Romania. Okay, Stalin split Moldova away from Romania. Most people that live in Moldova are Romanian. Okay, so this is very, very serious, guys. Okay, Romania will probably deploy their military to Moldova if Russia enters Moldova. Okay, and then you're talking about a NATO country fighting against Russia. 
And the U.S. and Israel held a virtual meeting about the Rafah operation, and there was a major disagreement in the timeline presented by Israel for evacuating civilians from Rafah. Israel said they could do it in four weeks, but the U.S. said that was not realistic. And I want to just share some flight paths with you guys. Here we have a U.S. Navy reconnaissance drone that was patrolling the southern part of the Taiwan Strait last night. And here we have one of the Cobra Balls that was active over the Bering Sea last night, monitoring the Russian ballistic missile tests, the ICBMs. We have a constant Phoenix that was flying over the Sea of Japan. And I want to just share this video that was released by North Korea. This is the intermediate range ballistic missile that North Korea tested the other day. And you can actually see the hypersonic warhead that it has. You can see the front of the missile there has this weird shape. That's the hypersonic warhead. Okay. And apparently this warhead is maneuverable. All right. So this is some type of a hypersonic glide vehicle it looks like okay it looks quite large and the missile is behind it so the missile is just used to basically get the hypersonic glide vehicle up to a proper altitude and a high enough speed and then the glide vehicle detaches from the missile and then it can maneuver and and fly however it wants so this is very serious guys okay north korea has hypersonic weapons now i repeat North Korea has hypersonic weapons, okay? Very, very concerning. And the U.S. and South Korea and Japan conducted some more trilateral exercises. And here you can see a U.S. nuclear bomber, a B-52, flying with some uh, Japanese and South Korean fighter jets. So they're preparing to go to war with North Korea and China in the event that China attacks Taiwan and North Korea attacks South Korea. They're preparing their bombers and fighter jet escorts for them. Okay, this is extremely serious, guys. Okay, the U.S. is planning to nuke North Korea in the event that North Korea attacks South Korea, guys. The U.S. is not messing around. Okay. And we also have cows in Ohio testing positive for the H5N1 bird flu. And this comes just two days after the first human case of bird flu was announced in Texas. So that's another thing we got to worry about. In addition to war, we got this bird flu going around now. Okay, that could be the next COVID. So I'll be back later on tonight with another update. And until then... Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the notification bell down below so you get notified when I post these updates. And until then, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations which is great for preparedness so you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past 100 years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information and to get started today.